to do on this old earth. Amen. That's one thing is to carry the gospel. Praise God. But I want to make a message across the crown. Christian Sydney will be having a revival. I said we'll be having Amen. a revival. Amen. September the 8th through the 11th or maybe even farther. Amen. And we'll be having Brother Nick and his wife and family. So let's get prepared. Let's get ready. And I made some of these flowers up. And I want you to take them and put them in your car window, take them to a store, wherever, where you work at or whatever. Let's get this church going. Let's get the revival going. Amen. Amen. And also, now, I'm not going to tell you to vote for a Democrat or vote for a public. I'm going to tell you to vote for God's way yes. and, and for our nation, church. And I uh, made out a form, amen, how I will vote with God. We got to go God's way, so it's back there. It's scripture. If you go by the scripture, you're not voting for Republican or Democrat. You're voting for God, and you're voting for this nation. This nation is in trouble, Church. Amen. I said this nation is in trouble. If we don't get this nation back to God and get them crooks and everything else out of the way, I'm talking about both parties. Amen. Amen. We ought to be smart enough. I said we ought to be smart enough, and I'll, I'll tell you another thing. I know the Democrats don't like to listen to the Republicans. I know the Democrats don't like to listen to them. But you need to listen to both of them Amen. and see just how much they lie and see what they stand for, church. We can't stand for abortion. We can't stand for lesbians. We can't stand for all these things. God will destroy this nation because of sin. Amen. Amen. So uh, get one of these and shame on you if you're not registered yeah, no. to vote. This is a Christian's obligation to vote. So you need to vote out there. Amen. Because uh, you, you, one of these days you're going to wake up and you're not going to have no nation. Will you be, be taken over? Amen. By communists or by Russia or China or whatever. Now, if God destroyed Israel, and that's his beloved country, he'll destroy us because of ungodliness. And I'll be preaching on that this morning. Amen. But let's remember this. Get you one of these and pass it up, go by and uh, I thank God this morning we have we, we still got a country to, to love. Amen. Praise God. All right, if you had your Bibles tonight, this morning, turn with me to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. Now, I deal with this all week. Amen. And God laid it on my heart. Amen. For us. Now, the Bible said the Word of God, the Scripture was God's Word. And the Word I'll be preaching right tonight, God's Word. But. It's for our learning. See, we have the Old Testament, which is God's Word, and we have the New Testament, which is God's Word, for our learning. Amen. That's our, we, we learn the history. We need to know the history of, of what, the, what God is saying, what God done for Israel, what God's going to do for Israel, what God's going to do for us. Amen. And I believe we are to go by it. Praise God. Now, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter set, chapter 8, verse 7, I'm going to preach on, I'm going to make sure Angie's got it, preach on God says what he means, and means what he says. God says what he means, and means what he says. Now, the Bible tells us in Galatians 6 and 7, or chapter 6, verse 7, God is not mocked. His word is not taken lightly or scorned. I mean, this is what I'm saying. God's word must never be taken lightly. His word is for our learning. Amen. And also the Bible tells us that we need to uh, understand God's grace, God's love, God's mercy, and God's goodness Amen. Doesn't mean that, and best of all, God, I, I, we had a, a, a couple of people we went around with, and they, they were, they were very, very, I said very, very, very religious. And every Sunday, they never failed to go to the, to their church. Amen. And they cussed and they grunt and everything else, but they was very religious. That's what's the matter for a nation today. It's very religious. Religious ain't going to get you to heaven. It's not going to take your sins away. But anyway, they said 
God loves us so much that he's not going to send us to hell. And at that time, I didn't understand the word, but you know what? God never sends nobody to hell. You send yourself to hell because God gave us his son, amen, to uh, save us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that you certainly have lived to die but have everlasting life. We need to take God's word seriously. Amen. Now, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7, For the Lord thy God, and he's talking to Israel, Israel is our example. Israel is for our learning. And are you missing what I'm saying, church? And I thank God, 1948, God brought Israel back to fulfill that. He's fulfilling the, the, the New Testament and filled all the promises of Abraham all the way up to where we're at now. Amen. So God is beginning to fulfill this. But in the meantime, we need to understand what God is saying. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, the milk of honey. A land of brooks, of water, of fountain, and depth that sprang out of mountains and hills. I mean, they, they wasn't used to this. I mean, they had to, they lived in, in, in Egypt and they had to carry the water and all this other stuff because they didn't have the seasons and things that the, that the God had promised them into the land of milk and honey. And this says in verse 8 a land of wheat and bar barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive, oil, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread with obscurity, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are armed, listen to that, and out of, the, out of the, whose hill thou mayst dig grass, when thou hast eaten and art filled full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. It reminds me, Brother Bill, of what we live today. We've got a land of milk and honey. We've got a land that was blessed. I mean, church, we was the most blessed land. Amen. Right now, well, we was, but we're losing everything. But we was blessed because God blessed this country, because the, this nation was, was, was founded upon Christianity. It was founded on the, on, the, on the Word of God. It was founded on the Ten Commandments, the th same thing that God told the children of Israel. But Israel turned their back upon God and all the commandments, and therefore we're going to look at what God has done, amen. And if we continue to keep on turning our backs upon God, now we've already got rid of the Ten Commandments. I said, we're they, they, we getting rid of it. They're already getting rid of the Bible. This is our nation, church. Can I say this is our nation, church? If you, you think God is going to stand by and let us turn our back up on the Ten Commandments and turn our back up on God's Word and all these do it that we're starting to do right now, if we turn our back up on God, God will turn His back up on us just like He did Israel. God, God says what He means and means what He says. And He gave us this Word this morning that we, that we can learn. Amen. But yet he gave us what we could have patience and we could have comfort and we could have, I've got hope today. I've got comfort today because church, God is still working on this nation. But church, the church is asleep. The church is beginning to turn their back up on God. And the church, the church needs to turn back to God. Can I hear an amen? Yes. <laughs> That's enough of that. And when thou hast eaten, verse 10, and when thou hast eaten and are full, then they shall bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. We should thank God every day for this land that we live in. Amen. We're the most blessed land in the world right, right now. But soon Israel is going to be the blessed land. Mm -hmm. Amen. But right now we are the, right now the blessed because God is still have his hands upon us. Don't let nobody tell you this otherwise because we, we still are trying to go to by, by the commandments of God, the principles of God, and the statutes of God. But church, we're going away from because the church is asleep. Amen. Amen. I said the church is asleep. Right. They're lazy, they're wretched, they're miserable, Amen. they're poor, and they're blind, and they're naked, and they're helpless, and they're stressed because they got Jesus, and they got the Word out Amen. of the church. And we need to get Jesus back in the Amen. church. We need to get the Word of God back in the church. Amen. And we need to get out there and tell people about how who God is, how loving He is, and then we got to realize He is a God, Amen, that will curse us if we don't bless Him. Amen. I will curse them. Praise God. Look at it. All right. 
Verse 11 says, Beware, beware that thou forgettest not the Lord thy God, and thou keepest the commandments and his judgment and his statute, which I commanded thee this day. Now, God has blessed this nation. Now, we need to go back to it. See, they're trying to do away with history of schools. And, uh, but all you got to do is say, thank God, God gave us history in the Old Testament. Amen. But we were founded upon the Ten Commandments. We was founded upon God. Right. They left the world back over there, Brother James, that uh, they didn't have a freedom to worship. Amen. They didn't have a freedom, amen, to do what they wanted to do. So God sent them over here. I said God sent them over here and, uh, and, they, and begin to build up the, the kingdom of God, begin to bless God, begin to rely upon God, and founded the, 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 the laws and everything up on the commandments, and God began to bless this nation. We're so far advanced. Israel was so far advanced because, you see, they had knowledge, they had wisdom, and everything from the rest of the nation because they relied upon God, and God gave them wisdom, God gave them knowledge, God gave them blessing, and God gave us wisdom, and God gave us knowledge, and He gave us all these things, Amen. and we're going to lose them if we don't get back to God. Amen. It's just as simple as that. We need to stand up for what is right. You're either for God or you're for this God. Either one. Amen. Amen. But it says in verse 11, Beware. Now you see all the prophecies that God gave them. The land was blessed. He set the rains in four seasons. I mean, they, they grew crops and everything. They weren't used to it, but God blessed them and let them know, I'll send the rain. I'll send the blessing. I'll send the goodness. And I will protect you. The greatest nation in the world at that time. Nobody could whip them. Nobody could take them. They were blessing God protected them. We got we we're, we're foolish here. We got we got a country nation that think we can't get beat. Right. We can be whipped, church. Amen. Because God is greater than man. Amen. I said God is great. And we got nations right now looking up this way. And we won't let people come in this nation. Now, I told you about the Trojan horse while back. We got people right now in our nation. I mean, they're shipping them into every uh, state. They're terrorists. They're, they're ungodly and everything else. And they're allowing them in. That, that's one way God can say, I'm going to destroy this country. And that's what's the one way he's going to do it. So we've got to begin to pray. We're in trouble, church. It's because it's not because of our nation. It's because of the church. And they're not listening to what God says. Right. Be aware of what God says. Read your Bible. A church, a nation that forsakes God, God will forsake them and send them to the devil's hell. Amen. Amen. I know this will maybe not be a joyful sermon, but I, God, the word is true and the word will bless you. God wants to bless his church. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Amen. He wants to bless you. Amen. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God and keep his commandments and his judgment and his statutes and his, in which I command you this day, least that when thou hast eaten and are full, boy, our nation is eating this full. Right. We're the most wasteful nation you ever see. Right. I mean, they say that the, the poor the other nations can live on what we throw away. Yep. Yeah. Hello? You ever go to a smoker's board sometimes? People just heat up place, everything just heat a little bite or two and throw it away. Right. They can eat, people can eat on that. Right. Yeah. These thou hast eaten and are full and has built godly, oh man, godly have goodly houses. We got some of the finest houses in the in the nation. President Reagan took a little crew chapter around our nation. He doesn't see all the houses and how pretty they were and everything and how, how mighty we was and everything. That helped him to tear down the walls over there. We are a blessed nation. We've got a home you came to the magic. We are, we're a blessed church, but we're losing our blessing. We're, use, we're losing God's mighty hand upon us. Amen. I mean, I, I've been studying this. I've been studying the history of Israel. I've been studying the Old Testament. That's what you need to do. I don't believe in the Old Testament. You need to believe in the Old Testament because it brings in the deep. And verse 13 says, well, let's look at verse 12. At least when thou hast eaten, and our fool and has built godly houses and dwelt therein. And when thou herds and thy flocks multiplied, 
and the silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast multiplied, or is multiplied, and all that thou hast multiplied, then thy heart be lived to die. This is our nation, church. We're one of the richest nations in the world. Or we was, but we're losing it. I mean, we're blessed. God said the four, the one four seasons. I mean, we're, we're the blessedest land in the nation. Disease and everything's on the rampage. God has promised that all these diseases and everything that, that He would take from those that serve Him. <clears throat> then thy heart is lifted up, and thou forgettest the Lord thy God, which thou, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness. Amen. This, this reminds me of, the, of the, how our nation was founded. They come across the ocean in the Mayflower and all these other ships. I can't remember them. My mind is not what it used to be. But all these other ships that they come over to the Mayflower and all of them, which I already said. But they, they was in the wilderness. They suffered. They died and everything to build this country. But it was founded on God's word. Don't look back to tell you any different. Amen. They had faith and trust in God. Then thy heart be lifted up, and they, and they forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bodies, who led them through the great and terrible wilderness, where were far as serpents and scorpions and drought, where there is no water, who brought, who brought thee forth the water out of the rock of the pit. <laughs> Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy father knew not, and he and he might humble thee, and that he might prove, he might prove Israel. That's what it says. He might prove thee to do good at thy latter end. And thou say in thy heart, My power. Don't sound like the United States. My power and my might. They have forgot God. God is the one that gives them the might. God has given them the power. God has given them the knowledge. God has given them the, everything we got in, in the United States, everything they built in the military and everything, God has given them the wisdom and the knowledge. Of it. But you know what, church? God is to preach and take this away from us because we're, we're turning our back upon God. God says what he means and means what he says, church. Yeah. Verse 17 says, And thou say in thy heart, my power and my might, of my hand hath God be this wealth. Lord, have mercy, church. Church, we got to wake up. It's not nothing we done. It's not by my mind, nor my power, but by, by my spirit self. God's spirit was behind this nation. It's still behind this nation. But we better wake up, church. Because God can withdraw that mind, that spirit. Verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers as it, as is it, it this day. And it shall be, if thou do all at all, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them. Now he said, We don't serve them gods. Yes, we do. We're set there. Worshiping this body. People they said, I can do what I want. If I want to be a lesbian, I'll be a lesbian. If I want to be a queer, I'll be a queer. If I want to, they may kill, kill the, the baby, whatever. They, I can do because it's my body. No, it's not your body. It's God's body. Amen. You are willing to be a one of made. The forever thing. The LDBGB, whatever they want to call it. Homosexuals. Abortion. Amen. If you're for it, you're you against God. It's like it is. All right. Verse 19 says that it should be if thou do all, if thou do all, forget the Lord thy God and walk in other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish at this name, as this nation which the Lord God destroyed. Nation, seven nations. God destroyed, amen, because to let Israel come in and, and, and let them bless this, let this bless this land was 
was going to perish in that place. But God let the, the children of Israel come in and he destroyed seven nations, amen, because they were so ungodly. When you get so ungodly and turn your back upon God, God will destroy you and God will destroy the nation. He'll destroy everything around because God is a holy God and a pure God and God will not stand for it. I know this 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 sound good, but church, we need to hear that because God wants to bless us. It says, "And walk after the gods and serve them and worship." I testify against you this day that thou shalt surely perish, as a nation which the Lord destroyed it before your face. So shall you perish, because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord. That's all God asks you to obey the obey the Lord. This is what I'm talking about right here. Now, number one, how much time I got in? God said, I don't change. God said, I, I will not change. I'm not going to change. I am the Lord that changes not. Amen. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. I will bless you, I will care for you, I will, I will be your shield, I'll be forth. But if you sin and turn your back upon you, I will curse you. Amen. I will not change my word for you. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. See, God, even though for God wanted to change, he can't change because his word is settled in heaven, so he can't change his word, and he can't change. Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, the grass is withered, the flower is faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. It will stand forever. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35 says, in heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. God said, I will not be slacked of my promises. Amen. I thank God for that because I thank God that healed me. Amen. He said, if, you, if you go to come to God, you need to heal him. He said, I will heal you. I am the God that healed him. I am the God that will bless you. I am the God that lifted you up. He will, he will keep that promise if we walk in his word. I thank God for that. I'm making it quick this morning. I think I've said enough, but I will, I will say one, one more thing. God means what he says, it says what he means. If this the dirty United States No, he didn't say that. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, you say you're a Christian, you should act like a Christian, talk like a Christian, and go by the word of God. Hello. Second Corinthians, I want you to mark this if you haven't got it marked. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. Oh, Second Chronicles, sorry. Second Chronicles. I should have put my glasses on this. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, if my church, if my church, in other words, if my people, which is his church, which are called by my name. You say that you love God and you're a Christian and everything, you should do, you should act like a Christian. You should walk as a Christian. Yeah. You should not be formed to this world. He said, I beseech you therefore, brother, be, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't think like you used to. You don't walk like you used to. You don't be things like you used to. You got a different thing. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 tells us. That my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. We stand in the need of prayer, church. Amen. Amen. That goes for Christians and it goes for sinners. I wouldn't want to be lost at this the time we're living right now. If I was a sinner, I'd be running to the altar. Because God means what he said, said what he said, I will destroy you if you don't repent. He shall humble himself and pray and seek my face and turn from their, and their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Our land needs a healing. The world ain't going to do it. 
them old stupid Democrats, them old stupid Republicans, they're destroying our country. No, the Christians are destroying this country. Amen. Standing around and doing nothing, believing in nothing. Hello? Amen. I didn't say it, God said it. Blaming everybody else. Amen. But the church is one who will stand before God. God means what it says. It says what it means. If you're not a Christian this morning, you said, I, I love you. I have mercy with you. I have no suffering with you. But if you don't repent, I, was, I will let the devil take you to hell. God sent nobody to hell. You sent yourself to hell. Amen. You can't blame nobody else. You can't blame the pastor. You can't blame the Sunday school teacher. You can't blame the church. His word is the truth. Like the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, Brother Tony taught. It means what it says, church. And it do what it says. My people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Turn from the wicked way. He ain't talking to the world, he's talking to Christians. People have lost. How can you be a Christian and, and just go along with abortion? That's wickedness. How can you believe in Christian and believe in that the homosexuals all right? Now, thank God we live in a nation. You can be what you want to be. You can be a monkey if you want to. That's up to you. You say, I'm a monkey. Well, you're a monkey. You, you got the freedom. But don't force your freedom on us. Amen. Right. And then Christians should stand around and let them do that. Amen. My people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn. From the big ways. When, when Jesus comes back, there's going to be very, very, very few that will go in the direction. I'm telling you. He's come back after people that's without spot, pretty much And it's by the mercies of God. Oh, we fell, but there's an altar there. But you still believe in Jesus Christ, Him crucified, and He changed your life. Therefore, freedom may be in Christ. He's a new creature. All things have passed with Behold, all things have become new. I'm a new person. I'm, this old man don't live in me anymore. He tries to, but he doesn't. Sin has no more power over me. Flesh will have no more power. Because if you walk in this flesh, you're going to live by the flesh. If you live in the spirit, you're going to live by the spirit. Mm -hmm. Church, God means what he says. He says what he means. God destroyed Israel. 2,000 years they lived in bondage. Not four, 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 was it 950 or 450 or whatever? Four, they lived in bondage, captivity, because they were ungodly, turned their back up on him. And finally, God delivered them out of Egypt. The churches are going into Egypt right now. And we need to pray and seek God. Lord, help me do what is right. Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning, don't know God. The same rule belongs to you. God will curse those that turns your back up on you. He loves the backslider. He loves the free. He loves the sinner. That's why he gave his son Jesus for salvation. Would you stand this morning?